on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, hi, everybody. Tuesday here on this program. What are we going to have to talk about here today? Anything going on? Well, yes, some stuff is going on. And uh, yes, we'll talk about Sasha, Naomi, Raw, the whole shebang coming up here after the break. But I do want to mention uh, very quickly today, best wishes to Mike Sempervivi. Not going to be on the show today. Still sick, although I believe that he said he's starting to feel a little bit better. But uh, he's still sick. Also, Tuesdays, we are normally scheduled to do a figure 40 with Lance Storm at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. No show today because Lance felt that I was not showing him enough respect. He walked into my office, he put his microphone on the table, and he left. So no show with Lance today. Of course that's not true. But what is true, unfortunately, is that Lance Storm has covid and so best wishes to Lance on a speedy recovery. I believe he's also starting to feel a little bit better here today. But uh, you know how that goes. We'll see if uh, if the recovery continues or if he has those ups and downs a lot of people have. But best wishes to Lance, and we will get him back on the show hopefully next Tuesday. So, uh, so best wishes to him. Wanted to get the important health-related stuff out of the way first. Because at the end of the day, Sasha Banks... Naomi, they walked out of a company over a disagreement regarding who was going to win some matches. I realize this is the most talked about story, but what is more important, everybody, is people's health. But yes, I'll get into that story after the break. We've got a lot to get into. Back in a moment of Observer Live. No Mike Semper Vivi today. No co-host. I don't need one today. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about here. Yes, Sasha and Naomi. Where to begin on this story? Well, yesterday on Observer Live, I guess we started the beginning, right? Now how we always start? Yesterday, Observer Live, I had the lineup for uh, Raw, which was, of course, non-existent as always. We knew that Omos was going to face Bobby Lashley in a cage match, and uh, that was it. By the time the show went off the air. And the show went off the air at, uh, you know, 3 Eastern. show starts at 8 or whatever. So uh, in the afternoon, they, I guess, announced, I presume on social media. I'm not much of a social media guy, to be honest. That they were going to be doing a six-pack challenge. And the winner was going to get Bianca Belair at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Which is, quite frankly, a total throwaway pay-per-view. I think the main event is Cody and Seth Rollins for the third time with nothing on the line, just a Hell in a Cell match. And uh, so they had a six-pack challenge announced. And Nikki Ash and Dewdrop and Becky Lynch and Asuka and Sasha and Naomi, who, by the way, are the women's tag team champions, they are all going to be in this, in this match, okay? So uh, what happened was... There was a disagreement between Vince McMahon and Sasha Banks. We'll go into more details here in a while, but they had a disagreement, and uh, Sasha and Naomi left. They left the building, and this happened as the show was on the air, okay? So about 45 minutes into the show, it was like before a commercial break, they cut backstage, and Adam Pearce is furiously uh, texting on his phone, And uh, Becky is there, and you just hear Becky say something like, I saw them. They put their belts on the desk, and they just walked out, and then we go to commercial. And we come back, and essentially, they shot a very quick angle where Becky explains that she, she saw Sasha and Naomi put their belts on the desk and walk out. And so, therefore, there can't be a six-pack challenge. And so she wants to just be named the number one contender, and Adam Pierce ends up ruling, well, it's going to be you and Asuka one-on-one, and the winner gets Bianca Belair. I don't know this 100%, but the impression I've been given is that neither of them actually had any idea what was really going on, and they were just told, go in there and do this, quick! And so they went in there and they did it. 
And uh, allegedly, you know, Becky just on the fly came up with, okay, well, let's just do this. Now, why in storyline, if Sasha and Naomi walked out, they didn't just make it a four-way. They took Dewdrop and Nikki Ash out as well. I don't know. But my presumption is that they figured, okay, well, they only have two hours to prepare for this six-minute match. And uh, we'll just have, you know, two good workers that we know can pull it off in six minutes, go out there and, and do it. Plus, they've been working on the road. So apparently that's why Nikki Ash and, and Dewdrop ended up not in the match. So they left. And uh, WWE then issued a statement during Raw. Okay. I was going to have Fauntleroy read it, but we'll be serious here. As serious as we can be for this preposterous story. I'll read it, and then maybe Fauntleroy can read it later. When Sasha Banks and Naomi... This is written... This is from WWE. When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE Head of Talent Relations John Laurinaitis' office with their suitcases in hand, placed their tag team championship belts on his desk, and walked out. They claimed they were not respected enough as tag team champions. And even though they had eight hours, even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret... I'm going to try and say this with a straight face. We regret we were unable to deliver, as advertised, tonight's main event. That's what they said. So, we got a couple of notes here. Uh, th there, there was a uh, big article at PW Insider which uh, largely jives with everything that I heard. And so I'm going to read that here. And then we will uh, we'll talk about more stuff that I heard. So uh, details still light regarding exactly what happened. This is actually from WrestlingObserver.com. The source is PW Insider. What caused Sasha Banks and Naomi to walk out of Raw Monday? One Tuesday report has a version of what led to WWE's Tag Team Champions leaving. According to PW Insider... The plan for Raw was that Banks and Naomi would go head-to-head -head in the planned six-pack challenge, with Naomi getting to challenge Raw women's champion Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. The report went on to say there is a belief this Friday's SmackDown would kick off an angle to set up Banks versus SmackDown women's champion Ronda Rousey at Hell in a Cell, with both Banks and Naomi losing at the event. A pitched alternative idea including Dewdrop and Nikki Ash that would have set up a different program was not gone with, leading to the two eventually informing John Laurinaitis they were leaving and handing over the titles. On the post-Raw Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said the two went to Vince McMahon about the creative plan. Vince did not back down, did not agree to what they were asking. The report said McMahon learned of their departure reportedly right as Raw was going live with the eventual Becky Lynch Adam Pearce segment pitched and approved on the spot, which led to the Lynch versus Asuka match. So... Uh, PW Insider writes, The belief among some is that the creative issue was not with Banks losing to Naomi, but how the du uh, duo would have been portrayed over the next several weeks, especially after they had put so much time into building their team once Vince McMahon issued an edict that they would be teaming and winning the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania 38. And then after diving into building that team, they were going to wrestle each other and go off to put over other talents, leaving them exactly where, which apparently was the crux of the issue, I guess back where they started. The uh, WWE plan looks to have been the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions would have been downplayed until their next program after Hell in a Cell. And uh, uh, Wade Keller refuted the statement about not trusting their opponents, saying, I can just say, I have asked around, there wasn't a pre-existing issue with Naomi and Sasha and anyone in that match. He also said there was not much sympathy backstage towards either woman, nor a sense of them taking a stand for something people agreed with. And uh, as of now, both women still on the active roster. So, I did hear that story that uh, Naomi was supposed to win the six-pack challenge. Naomi was going to go on to Hell in a Cell. 
Sasha Banks was going to do a feud with Ronda Rousey and have a championship match at Hell in a Cell. So both of the tag team champions would be challenging for the singles titles, and they would lose. And uh, this apparently upset Sasha and Naomi because they have done such a great job in their minds of building their team up since winning the titles at WrestleMania. If you're watching the video right now and you're looking at my face, yes, I find this whole thing to be completely preposterous. Uh, do they not remember back in the day where when you were going to build up a champion, th that person beat the tag team champions one on two, literally in a handicap match. The tag team champions would often do jobs for the champion. I mean, I, I understand, like, uh, you know, being happy to win the titles at Mania and everything. But uh, what's going on here? You've built up this team to such a degree that you can't do a job to the singles champions at Hell in a Cell. Have I been watching a different Raw and SmackDown where Sasha Banks and Naomi are this huge, uh, popular, fantastically over main event tag team act? Have I missed that aspect of the television? Because when I watch the show, they're the women's tag team champions. And they're getting the same pops they got before. Uh, the belts are exactly positioned largely as they're... Uh, I mean, I got a lot more to say after this after the break, but I don't got a lot of sympathy. And I think one of the keys to the story is, bro, I ain't the only one that has no sympathy. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, listen. Anytime I've dealt with this before, anytime you dare say anything negative about Sasha, here they come. So I guess I'm going to have to deal with that here today. But hey, you know what's funny is whatever I say about Sasha Banks today or Naomi or whoever, they're going to, you know, they'll come after me. And then those same fans will be in the building when Vince McMahon comes out and they'll all bow to him. So anyway, I've seen already some defenses of, oh, my God, well, you know, and it's true. We, we only know one side of the story here. We only know WWE's side of the story. But... uh I've heard several versions of the story, and they're all largely the same, that Sasha didn't like the booking, and she left. And what's interesting is, bro, there's been some horrible booking in this company. And your issue is that the tag team champions, one of the tag team, one half of the tag team champions is going to win a six-pack challenge over the top women on Raw, and then she's going to go to headline a pay-per-view against the champion and then lose in the end, and somehow that's a downgrade. And then the other one is going to start a feud with Ronda Rousey, the champion, and they're going to go back and forth and do a bunch of angles, leading to a championship match at a pay-per-view, which he's going to lose, and apparently this is like, you know, this is just horrible. The, the women's tag team champions will be in shambles after this, okay? So listen, if, if, uh, if you think that this is just like whatever— Here's what I'm going to tell you about it. You're welcome to think whatever you want and side with whoever you want, okay? But let me tell you something about WWE. These wrestlers are given stupid ideas. I'm not talking Sasha in... I'm talking everybody, okay? From the bottom to the top. They're given stupid creative ideas all the time. And uh, and boy, have I heard some arguments from, from very, very... I'm talking top... Folks that have argued storylines, and Vince is like, "Nope, this is what we're doing." And uh, so, obviously, I think I think everybody is is pretty well aware, especially when you listen to interviews from people who have left WWE, that the idea that everybody in WWE is satisfied with their creative, it's ridiculous. Of course, they're not. They they you know, there's people in WWE, there's people in AEW, there's people in New Japan. Name a promotion. And there's a bunch of people there that are dissatisfied with their creative, right? Obviously. I mean, this is common sense. So you would think that if you have a company full of folks that are presented with bad creative all the time and get frustrated with the creative, well, you would think that if Sasha and, and Naomi were handed bad creative and they finally took a stand... And they just said, no, I ain't doing this. I'm out of here. And they walked out. Well, you would think that all of the other wrestlers would be on their side, would back them up, would say, finally, somebody stood up for themselves. 
Because I see a lot of fans here. Oh, finally someone stood up for themselves. Well, you would think that the wrestlers who are dealing with this every day would say the same thing. We are standing. Thank God someone's finally standing up for themselves. Hopefully this leads to change or whatever. That did not happen. Dude, I literally am aware of two people that are that are uh, that have publicly said anything positive about Sasha. The funny thing is, like, and this is all on Sasha. I haven't heard anything about Naomi. No one's even mentioned Naomi. It's all Sasha, okay? William Regal made a comment about how he put his job on the line for her back in the day and really wanted her to be signed. And, uh, and Dax Harwood uh, made a comment about how you've got to take your, your career into your own hands. Those are the only two people I have seen, okay? Internally, and I'm sure maybe there's somebody that's, you know, I'm sure Jimmy Uso's sticking up for Naomi and everything like that. But, I mean, sure, it's, sure somebody internally is going to do whatever. But I have not heard from one person, not one, that is sticking up for Sasha and Naomi in this situation. And not only are they not sticking up for Sasha and Naomi, but boy, have I heard a lot of terms thrown around. Most of them, some derivative of the word Mark. Mark. Effing Mark. A Mark to a degree that is unfathomable. I mean, all of it. There is. There has been, I have heard, zero support for Sasha Banks in this situation. So, quite frankly, like, if you want to, you can get mad at me if you want. But, like, uh, dude, I am not some voice of, you know, whatever. I mean, I've been a lot nicer on this show than anything that I have heard from people in WWE over the last 24 hours. So, uh, hey, if you want to come after me, go for it. But, you know, maybe don't bow to Vince McMahon the next time he comes out. Or I'm sure many of your favorites on television, I mean... Zero support. I'm talking zero. But like I said, it's funny. I mean, I haven't really heard anything, anybody saying anything about Naomi, and she walked out too. It's all about Sasha. And, uh, you know, I've heard it all. Mark, Diva, I mean, the list goes on and on. There is zero support for Sasha Banks walking out of WWE over all of this. People are furious. They think it's ridiculous. They think that she's whatever. So uh, that's the story. And uh, where this goes, I mean, I don't know. But, uh, you know, all of the, literally every single bit of support that I've seen for Sasha Banks coming out of this has either been for people in another company that weren't there last night, or, uh, and that's it, or fans. Those are the only two. The ac- her actual coworkers, the people that work with her in that company, have zero sympathy for what happened here. So I think that should probably tell you something. And, uh, again, we largely have the official WWE side of the story. But I also heard from, you know, a lot of people, obviously off the record, in WWE and not uh, not sympathetic to this at all. And trust me, these are people that have been presented with really stupid ideas and they've had to do them. And they are not sympathetic on this one. So I think that... Uh, I think that kind of tells you that, you know, she she didn't like some creative, but uh, the other wrestlers probably looked at that creative and thought, dude, what are you complaining about? Like, both of you are going to be headlining a pay-per-view in singles championship matches, and uh, and you walked out over that. Like, what? This is your job. I mean, you're not really the tag team champions. It's fake. You were chosen to walk around with these two belts and do matches, and uh, now they've come up with another idea to you to position you in a top position. They would have been in a top position on television for weeks, setting up angles. Uh, Sasha would have laid out Ronda Rousey. I mean, all of that. They do all of that stuff leading to matches, and that was creative that they decided, we're walking out of this company over that. So very, very like non-existent sympathy for... For Sasha Banks and, uh, what do you mean bad take? I'm not even giving you a take. I'm telling you exactly what's going on here. It's not even my take. Why are you even mad at me? I'm telling you exactly what I've heard from multiple people within the company. As usual, it's all my fault. Stand up for WWE. Well, stand up for Sasha Banks if you'd like to. I'm telling you 
what I have heard from her coworkers. So it can get mad at me if you want. You can kill the messenger. I don't care. I mean, that's that's how this normally works on the Internet, right? Well, let's talk about some other news, and we'll talk about the rest of Raw. Because I think everyone's asking about uh, Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. So, yes, Ric Flair's having his last match, July 31st. Jim Crockett Promotions presents Ric Flair's last match, taking place on Sunday, July 31st, Nashville Fairgrounds. And uh, Dave believed it would be uh, FTR and Ric Flair versus the Rock and Roll Express and a mystery partner. And, uh, yes, uh, the mystery partner... Well, I can't say this is going to be the mystery partner. Uh, I'll put it this way. Ricky Steamboat has been asked if he wants to be the mystery partner, okay? Ricky Steamboat did an angle in WWE about a decade ago, and uh, and he was absolutely destroyed by, uh, I think it was the core, what was the name of the group that destroyed him? But anyway, uh, he was seriously injured. And uh, his, I think, blood on the brain. I mean, it was bad. Like, he could have died. And so he was never allowed in the ring again from from WWE. So, uh, you know, every, Ric Flair's got a pacemaker and everything like that. But, I mean, I'm no doctor. But to me, I would be more concerned about Ricky Steamboat in the ring than Ric Flair. Uh, but Ricky Steamboat has been asked. And uh, Ricky Steamboat has been in the ring for sure, within the last five years, he's done some uh, he's done some indie dates and that sort of thing. And there was even one show, which I think was up in Canada, where uh, he made an appearance. And then, as part of the show, he hit the ring and did a full Ricky Steamboat babyface comeback. And he looked great. Apparently, he looked awesome. And he was totally fine afterwards. And so, uh, the impression I've been given is that he is kind of, he's getting in the ring... And uh, it's kind of like uh, the Steve Austin story in a way. If he feels that he can do this match, he's going to do it. And if he feels he can't do this match, he's not going to do it. But uh, from people who have who have seen him uh, and seen a lot of the footage of Ric Flair, I mean, I know a lot of people are concerned about the health of both guys, but uh, essentially the feeling is if there's four other young guys in there and Flair's in there to do a few spots... And Ricky Steamboat's in there to do a bunch of chops and make a comeback. Uh, this can largely go off without a hitch. So that's the update on uh, Flair's final match and Ricky Steamboat. And we'll do more news after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Golly. I don't know how some of you get through the day flabbergasted. WWE's filed a trademark for what appears to be a new tag team or faction name. Bloody Brutes. We don't do blood. We're going to have a team called Bloody Brutes. So I guess we'll find out who gets that one. Yeah, I am flabbergasted. I mean, I should have known, but... Uh, some. Uh, there's no there's no logic. There's What's the old saying? There's no uh, logic in the eyes of love. I think I made that up, but you guys know what I'm getting at. SmackDown Friday, 1.893 million viewers, down 5.3% from the previous week. SmackDown finished second on network TV with a .4 rating in the 18-49 to 49 demo, down 13%. NBA, NBA, NBA. AW Rampage, 340,000 viewers, which was actually up 16.4%, airing at 2.30 p.m. on the West Coast. 18-49 to 49, at .12%. So uh, that beat uh, many episodes of NXT in their normal time slot at 2.30 Pacific. Uh, this week, I believe they will be airing at uh, 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So you can uh, you can check that out. You guys want the Raw Report? Should we just do that? Mm-hmm. Something else for you to get mad at me about. Actually, if you wanted you to get mad at me, I'd say that Raw was great. Raw was, it was fine. So it opened up with... Uh, Bobby Lashley and Omos and Cedric Alexander ran down before the match and attacked Lashley. Then they got in the cage and Cedric Alexander kept interfering and uh, MVP kept hitting Lashley with his cane. And the announcers kept telling us this was illegal. Even though it's a cage match with no rules. So finally, uh, Omos, you know, beats him up for a while uh, and it was it was fine. Dave said it was Omos's best match, and I guess he might be right. I mean, 
This is a low bar. Was it better than WrestleMania? I don't know. All I know is Omos looked like the biggest geek at the end of this match. He throws Bobby Lashley into the side of the cage. Bobby Lashley hits the side of the cage. The cage door falls down. Bobby Lashley rolls, and uh, you know the finish. He rolls down, and he ends up on the ground, and he touched the ground first inadvertently, and he wins. But, of course, it's WWE, and uh, they have determined that you, the WWE viewer, are a moron, and you can't figure this stuff out without having your hand held and everything explained to you. So what they do is Bobby Lashley hits the cage, the cage falls down, and Bobby Lashley lands in the middle of the panel. So he has not touched the ground yet. So he lays there. Omos is in the ring, and he stands there, and he furrows his brow. Huh? What? Lashley lays there. Omos stands there looking at him. The announcer's like, oh my god, the cage broke. If Lashley puts his foot on the ground, why, he wins! Thanks. Finally, Lashley rolls down and puts his foot on the ground. And he wins. And this moron, this Omos, literally, like, he could have he could have done laps around the arena, like six laps in the time that he stood there looking like a moron as this guy's laying on the panel. So Lashley wins. If you couldn't figure it out, you stupid fans, he won because the cage broke and he put his foot on the ground. Got it? In case they didn't explain it to you well enough on the show last night. So anyway, uh, next week they're going to do a Bobby Lashley challenge with Omos and MVP. But they won't tell you what it is. It's just going to be a challenge next week. Got it? Then we had uh, Ollie come out for a match with uh, Theory. Does this sound familiar? They announced Miz is a special referee. This sound familiar? Miz uh, comes out to be the referee, and then all of a sudden, uh, Theory says, well, I talked to Mr. McMahon, and you have to prove yourself before you can face me. So uh, your opponent tonight is Veer Mahan, with Miz as guest referee. So Ali goes for a dive. Miz stands in his way. Ali yells at Miz. Veer shows up, lariats him, puts him in his move, and uh, Ali just submits. He gives up, quits. And then they uh, beat him up afterwards, and the Mysterios run down. And the Mysterios beat up Veer two-on-one advantage babyfaces, and they send him packing. Then we had the awkward Becky Lynch-Adam Pierce deal where they try to fit together what just happened in the main event. Riddle faced Jimmy Uso. Good match. Uh, It's a fun match. Uh, They both worked well. And uh, Jimmy distracts the referee. The referee, uh, first, Jimmy and Jay try to cheat to pin him. So the referee ejects Jay. And then uh, Jimmy is all upset, and he turns around, he gets small packaged, and he gets pinned. No Randy Orton. But they are still pushing the unification match coming up on SmackDown on Friday. And I would not be surprised if we had no finish uh, leading to uh, another match at the pay-per-view, which at this point, given this pay-per-view, they probably should just do a match to unify the titles to give the people something because uh, we ain't got much. We had uh, Liv Morgan's segment. She has joined AJ and Finn Balor, which they've been doing at house shows. Judgment Day promo. Uh, Edge wants to recruit Liv Morgan, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles. Most likely, it may be happening, because as we noted on Observer Radio last night, Edge wanted a fourth member of Judgment Day. (sighs) Harlan, who has been fired, so he can't be the fourth member. So now uh, Edge is trying to get AJ to join, and uh, maybe they'll get AJ. Maybe that'll be the fourth member. I don't know, but that's the uh, storyline that they're doing here. We then had AJ and Finn Balor versus Los Lotharios, which was a good match. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but AJ and Finn Balor, they're great singles wrestlers who are also a great tag team. And Los Lotharios did a good job. AJ and Finn hit their finishes, got the win, celebrated with Liv Morgan. Uh, this was uh, one of the highlights of the show although not the actual highlight. The actual highlight of the show is a man named Kevin Owens, who is a gem. And you know the thing with Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens faced Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania in Austin's last match in the main event of WrestleMania. 
And he has since done an interview, and he's just basically said, uh, dude, I mean, it's all, it's done. I mean, there, there ain't nowhere to go from here. I've peaked, and like, that's it. So I'm not saying that he doesn't care anymore, but now that he has achieved, like, the, the greatest height he will ever achieve in this business, having the final match of Stone Cold Steve Austin's career in Texas in the main event of a WrestleMania. And he's admitted, like, that's that's the top of the mountain. It's like, it's all downhill from here. I mean, maybe he's at that point where it's like, bro, who cares? I'll do anything. Whatever. Because when you get to that point, which brings us back, by the way, to that Sasha Banks, Naomi thing. When you get to that point where it's like, oh, who cares? I'll do whatever. And I'm going to have fun with it. Dude, you're at your best. And this guy is at his best. Like, he's doing this segment with Ezekiel. And, dude, it's Ezekiel. It's the former Elias who's pretending he's his own brother. Bro, this should be the worst thing since the heyday of The Fiend. But, man, Kevin Owens is putting his all into it. And he's having fun, and it's awesome. So they've done the DNA test, but uh, this idiot Otis ate uh, barbecue over it, and he got barbecue in the sample, so it got tainted, so they don't got the results of the test. And he's just, he can't get through this. I mean, the announcer are even saying, like, can you move on to something else? And he's like, no, and I don't even know why, but I can't. So anyway... He's uh he's upset. He's upset with with Chad Gable because he screwed up this, even though he's supposed to be so smart. And so Chad Gable vowed to go out and beat Ezekiel tonight. We had another Alexa Sonia match. This one went four minutes. They've gotten rid of the uh, old Alexa music that was half and half. Now she's just got cheery chipper music or whatever, and she uh, beat Sonya Deville with the DDT. And then Sonia got mad at the ref for not counting fast enough. She slapped him, so presumably she's going to be in big trouble. For two hours, for the whole, oh, they're screwing up Cody Brigade. They don't know what to... Listen, this guy is number two in this company to Roman Reigns right now. The show opens with a clock. Cody Rhodes is going to come out in one hour, 50 minutes, and 44 seconds. There's a clock that they keep showing throughout the show. This is when Cody's coming out. Get ready. Here he comes. So he finally comes out, as promised. Fans go nuts. And long story short, he is going to face Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell. Seth Rollins, by the way, bro, I hate this laughing gimmick. I mean, I know he thinks he's the Joker or whatever, but dude, you've done nothing but lose to Cody Rhodes, and you're out here laughing about it. And it's just like... Bro, I can't care about this match when you're a clown. And it's the same thing with Becky Lynch. Bro, there's plenty of clowns on this show, okay? Elias, you know, he's a clown. Uh, the 24-7 geeks, they're all clowns. Bro, I don't need Seth Rollins being a clown, and I don't need Becky Lynch being a clown. It makes me not care about any of their feuds. So, you know, they're having a match. At least at the end, you know, when Cody said, I'll see you in hell, then Seth got all serious for a while. But, dude, this laughing stuff is just death. It's death. Oscar promo. Ezekiel beat Chad Gable. They went 11 minutes. Chad Gable's really good. Ezekiel, I mean, he could have a match. But, I mean, this was just like, it was just there. But we had 11 minutes of Kevin Owens freestyling the storyline on on commentary and dude he was awesome this was the best thing on the show by leaps and bounds so ezekiel gets the win kevin owens is just he's furious they showed a photoshop picture of uh of ezekiel with elias and kevin's having none of it he's like dude it's a photoshop i saw it on twitter that's him with some guy to cons he's just going off this was awesome we had a segment Oh, God. 24-7 stuff. Kirchizawa is in the garbage can. Should I start over again? You didn't realize Sasha walked out earlier? Tozawa was in a garbage can. He gets served papers. He goes running. Truth tries to steal the 24-7 title from Dana. Dana goes running. She runs into Carmella. Carmella's upset because her makeup got messed up because she got run into, even though she's not even on the show. She's doing her makeup for fun. And uh, this is leading to a feud between Dana Brooke and Carmella and Truth in a three-way over the 24-7 title. Did I mention there was no sympathy when Sasha walked out 
because they wanted her to headline a pay-per-view in a singles title match. Anyway, uh, Lacey Evans comes out to do a promo and a babyface promo. But uh, I wasn't in the crowd, and I can't speak for everybody, but when she came out, I was, like, cringing, just waiting for her to start burying the crowd and turn heel. And I feel like a lot of the fans were thinking the same thing because they weren't super into this. It was like, okay, well, here it comes. And it never came. So hopefully they've just dropped the idea and she can start coming out and beating people up instead of just... We're on seven weeks of the same story now. So it's time to pull the trigger on some action. And then, of course, we had the main event. It was Oscar and Becky Lynch. They got 10 minutes. And uh, you know they are? Two professionals. They did not have eight hours to rehearse. They had uh, a couple hours to get up, get a match plan. They went out there. They did it. It was good. Uh, the finish was awesome. So Bianca's in a chair. Becky throws Asuka into Bianca because she wants Bianca to attack her so that she'll win via DQ and go to get a championship match. But, uh, you know, Bianca jumps up on the apron and the ref's trying to get rid of her. Becky runs over and she grabs the big uh, uh, umbrella of Asuka and she rears back and Asuka pff, blows the mist right in Becky's face, kicks her in the head and pins her. It was awesome. Of course, then the referee is like trying to wipe green stuff off Becky's face. But he doesn't reverse the decision. But whatever. We had a good match to close the show. Asuka's on the way to a championship match at Hell in Cell. And we're off to a commercial break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi recovering. Hopefully back here soon. Best wishes to him. Lance Storm battling COVID. So no Lance Storm show today this afternoon. Spurs here says, Dave mentioned there may be a contract issue in play as well with the Sasha Naomi situation. If you remember, this isn't the first time Sasha has walked out. She asked for her release in 2019, but Vince told her no and to take time off instead. Could this be the culmination of years of issues? And do you know the current status of her contract? No, I don't. So, I mean, you know, if, if, if it came down to a contract issue, like, do it after the show. Don't walk out at the beginning of the show. I mean, hello? I know this is being defended by by certain people, but, like, if you have a contract issue, then deal with your contract issue professionally. Don't just walk out at the beginning of the show. I'm the bad guy. Let's see. Oh, man. Oh, man. I shouldn't have opened my text messages. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> I can't! I can't! Is the show over yet, Dom? How long do I have here? Thank you. I can't take it. I got to get off this social media. It's the bane of my existence. It's the worst. So you know what? I'm out of here. But I'll be back tomorrow. Actually, I'll be back tonight with Vinny and Craig. Raw 22. Thank God we can just talk about something from 25, 30 years ago. And then uh, tomorrow, Wrestling Observer Live... And uh, Wrestling Observer Radio. I want to thank a lot of you for listening. Not all of you. Some of you need to take your headphones off and put them on the desk and just walk out. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.